Good morning, boys and girls. It's time for the Cap Guy Show, starring the Cap Guy, Henry, and JT, of course. Good morning, everybody. Cap Guy here with JT, and uh, we're going to go over what we sold, how much we made, and then I'm going to show you my inventory room, some of the things we've done, and I'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. And uh, let's get into what I sold yesterday. And here we go. We sold uh, eight things. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. JT, what do you want? Oh, hang on. He's wanting to tell me a joke. I swear. That boy, he just can't win. Win for losing with him. What? Oh, by the way, I'm wearing this cap in honor of my boy, Bruce, I served with. He's a big Charger fan, so come across this cap at the bins and thought I'd wear it for you, Bruce. Hope you like it. What are you wearing? I want it on your hat. You wearing mine? I thought we were doing a California. You know, dude. He's wearing my hat today, and uh, why are you wearing my hat? Well, I thought we were doing a California theme. <laughs> what do you know about California? Well, I do listen to Post Malone. <laughs> my grandson listens to Post Malone. Oh my goodness! Well, I just thought I'd I'd uh, I'd stay California for you, Dodgers. It's baseball season. I know, I know, I know. It's getting ready to start, but we're Ranger fans. Well, I'm a I'm a Dodger fan. Okay, all right, whatever. You know, you stand by here a minute, and uh, I want to tell my joke. Oh, what's your joke? What happened to the chicken and the pig that went to the restaurant? I don't know what happened to the chicken and the pig that went to the restaurant. I ate them. No, I ate them. No, I ate them. Uh, no, I'm trying to, never mind. Never mind. You ain't going to win this. All right, you stand by. And uh, <sighs> you put me on the death pile. I know I put you on the death pile. We're going to get rid of that death pile. Then I'll get you a chair. How about that? All right, folks, let's get into what I sold. First thing I sold yesterday, I got an offer on these. I've had them for a while. Uh, these are, I uh, paid a couple of bucks for these. They're uh, Nike Air Force Ones. They are vintage. They're size 16. I had them for 18. He sent me an offer for 15. Thank you for your purchase and for watching my YouTube channel. Uh, so those are on their way. I made uh, 11 50 off these after it was all said and done. The next item I sold, or uh, I sold, and I probably shouldn't have bought this. It's a vintage GI Joe, nineteen, uh, I believe it's nineteen ninety four. I'll find it here yet. In a ninety two, I'm sorry, gung ho edition. Um, it was in pretty good shape. It still had the box and the manual and everything, but a couple of the stripes on the arm. Uh, let's see if I can find that here. Had had a little bit off of them. Uh, paid eight forty eight and sold it for eleven plus shipping. And so when it was all said and done, I made a dollar, but it was taking up some space and I got rid of it and that's all that matters. Uh, the next item I sold was this uh, Toby Keith uh, uh, should have been a cowboy snapback cap. Should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to rope and run. JT, are you going to do that old, old video? Yes, Toby Keith's from Moore, Oklahoma, near me. Uh, big center fan, and I'm not. So anyway, ten dollars for the cap. I had eighteen cents in it, so I made uh, I made basically ten dollars off this hat. This was a good one for me. I bought these at the Goodwill locally. Paid uh, three sixty three a piece, so total was seven twenty six. I lotted them up together. I had them for fifty three ninety eight. Uh, sent an offer for forty nine. And they accepted plus shipping, so I made thirty nine dollars off of these headphones. They're, uh, they're I guess range impact sport range type uh, headphones. The next item found this at a yard sale about three or four weeks ago. Paid a couple bucks. Uh, it's a vintage nineteen ninety one personal home electric electrolysis. I can't even hardly say it. Uh, hair removal system. I don't need to use that last night. You ain't got no hair on your legs. You're a... Never mind. I can't say that word. You'd get offended if I call him a puppet. 
I ain't no dummy. I didn't say you was a dummy. All right, hang on. All right, next item. 47 brand Notre Dame raised letter cap. That's the second one in a week I've sold. Uh, I got 15 for this. Again, I had eight cents in, 18 cents invested in it. This one, uh, instead of having the uh, Fighting Irish on the back, had, uh, let's see here, had this, uh, the charm with the uh, ND in it. Uh, so maybe it was because it's uh, St. Patty's Day. Maybe that's why they're buying them. That's, that just hit me. Yeah, some things have to hit you like a rock. I, J, JT, doggone it. All right. And the next item was a bunch of uh, one-touch glucose, glucose uh, ultra blue test strips. Um, nine of them. Sold them for $40. Had a uh, dollar thirty in these, so made about twenty five fifty in them. And the last thing I sold, I bought these last summer. I've sold some before. Um, uh, most of the sizes I have is four X. It's a reversible Atlanta Hawks practice jersey. They are new. This is the last large that I had, and as you can see, it's got the different logos in the NBA and all that. But they're pretty cool. This was the large. Got fifteen ninety nine plus shipping. So when it was all said and done, I made about $15 on it. And uh, all in all, the numbers, I uh, had eight sales. I um, had $24.18 in cost of goods, $176.48 in total sales, and $126.50 in profit. So not a bad day. I had the same number of sales as Monday. Uh, or, uh, yeah, Monday. And so... Uh, a little bit, just about $7 difference in the profit. Um, I did do some promoted listings this morning at 1, 1.5%. One I'm trying that as another angle of doing this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you now was the, uh, the inventory room where I keep most of my stuff. Um, I've showed it to you before in some of the other videos, but now we've gotten some, some more detailed... Uh, oh numbers a number system and my suggestion to everybody and as you can see these are mostly uh, hard goods and then i have some that i know exactly where they're at so i don't have them this is some new stuff and some new shelving we moved out all those bins that were here before and then this is going to be what we work on next is the clothing um all the jeans and those are starting to disappear and the shirts, and this is the last of my clothing. When I get through this, I won't be buying much clothing anymore. Um, we're doing the same with, I got shoes, as you can see, all kinds of shoes. And then we're going to a box system on the other shoes. We still got some here on the floor, but we're going to this system with the, with the shoes. Um, jackets will be uh, boxing up when it gets a little bit warmer and getting those outside. Um, these are some of the other bins that I keep in here and everything's pretty much, you know, ink, remotes, PlayStation games. And then I have these other bins of, this is all t-shirts of different colors. And of course now the color doesn't matter because we've got a numbering system, but when, and then of course caps. And this is just a small sample of caps. These are black, these are blue. Um, over here is mostly black. And then in, under my bed I have, <laughs> Uh, all the other colors. So again, it's, it's a work in progress, but my suggestion to people is when you're going to have a lot of listings and, you know, if you've got 50 or something, you're, you're going to know where your stuff is, or you hope you do. Um, well, when you're doing, and I have closing in on 2,300 listings, when you're doing that, you've got to have some kind of numbering system. It's it's really difficult to find the small stuff sometimes. Um, and yesterday with that Notre Dame cap, I had a hard time finding it, and it ended up being behind the bin on that top shelf after I went through two or three bins trying to locate it. So a numbering system helps. Empty Hanger on YouTube has a real good system. Hers is a little bit over the top, in my opinion but she does have a very organized system. So I have taken some tips from it and the numbering system works. 
I did invest in the clear poly bags to put the t-shirts in. So if it's number W010, then I go to that bin W and I find number 10 and verify that it's the correct one. And it works really well. It makes it a lot easier than digging through a bin of, you know, 50 t-shirts to try to find the right one. Even if they're folded, you still got to dig through them and verify it's the right one. And, and some of mine are duplicates, uh, maybe in different sizes or different styles, but the numbering system is the way to go if you're going to have hundreds or thousands of items on on uh, any any platform. Uh, it's it's just so much easier, and you put them in your custom SKU, W O ten, and then when you sell it, you know exactly where it is. You go to it and you grab it. The bigger stuff, if it sits on the shelf, if it's a printer or a, you know a VCR or something, I, I understand you don't have to do that, but you can name your shelves like Lonnie does. Um, I don't like pre-boxing stuff and sealing it. Uh, like the shoes, I want them open. Rally Roots came up with a good system and they use it on their wall in their YouTube videos. Um, I don't like, and I won't name the person, but some people seal theirs and have them numbered and everything. But when I'm shipping something, I want to put eyeballs on that item again. I don't want it already sealed. And, and if I can't see through the package, I want to touch it, feel it, know that it's the right thing again. Because you're, if you're paying the shipping and you do free returns and it comes back because it was the wrong item, you just lost probably all the profit uh, that you had in it, or at least most of it. Um, so numbering systems is the way to go. And whatever you use by naming them things that you like, animals or people or whatever, or, or a number or a letter, um, then do that because that that's the way to go and, and keep it on your computer or on your phone and your SKU. So you know exactly where it is. And other than that, um, I appreciate the new subscribers. I got a few, I'm still trying to get to a hundred. I'm about 14 away. And then hopefully it'll go up from there. Um, if there's things you want to know about or, or me to talk about, um, I'd be more than happy to do this again. I've been doing it since 2004 part-time. In the last year since May, I've been doing it full time. And again, as I always say, it takes a lot of effort. There's a lot more to it than just going out and finding this stuff and listing it. Um, I hope that what I'm telling you and, and trying to teach you is helping you in some way. Maybe you can pick up a tip here or there for those of you who've been selling for a long time. You know a lot of this stuff and you may know things I don't know. I, I do watch other YouTube pickers to try to learn some of them I already know what I'm looking at and I question, you know, just like they would mine some of the, the items, but when they're successful at it, Hey, it's your, it's your show. You do it your way. Um, it does take, it does take effort and it's a lot of work, but it's worth it when you see the profits. And as you've seen in my videos, um, it, it's pretty lucrative on certain things. And again, hard goods is the way to go. Diversify, do offers, do promoted 1%, 1.5% on some of your things. And it ain't that much on, you know, $25, 1%. Ain't going to, ain't going to hurt you, uh, to, uh, to boost the, the, the visual of that item to get it to help se uh, to sell. And, uh, other than that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Y'all tune in tomorrow. And uh, say goodbye, JT. Goodbye, JT. <laughs> Never mind. Y'all have a great day.